Sometimes in Power BI, it's useful to combine text into a cell. For example, who are the two people who started on this date? Or even combine them with how many sales they had or another measure. And you can also do that in kind of a tooltip. So here I can see who are the three people with the highest sales for each brand. So my name is David Benayim, and I'm going to go through all of these things with you, including how to deal with aggregations and various different other aspects. So I have tons of videos on my channel about Power BI, Excel, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, then generally I'm covering on my channel. So subscribe if you want to see more information like this. So the functions we're going to cover are concatenate X, top N, format, and summarize in this video. Now, if you want to do the base case, you can just do quick measures from here. And this is going to be concatenated list of values. And this is pretty easy to use and very, very useful. So I can just say, I want to put name in here. And you can say when you want to truncate it. So if I go to say four, for example, and click add. So quick measures will write this whole really long formula for you, which uh, has lots of concatenates, X's and concatenates and other things like top end that we will cover. But this one will allow you to do this last a maximum thing. So for example, what I can do is I can take the one that I've made, which is this one is called list of something, and then it will show them to you. And after four, it will go, etc., like that. So this is what we're going to kind of build on our own. And we're not going to do the etc. We're going to do that in a slightly different way. So if you click on new measure here, you get this. Let me zoom in and you can see it bigger. So I'm going to say names listed equals concatenate x. So sometimes this gets in the way of this, so I've just done some spaces. So we've got concatenate x, and what is the table you want to concatenate? And then the expression, and then these are optional, that they are in square brackets. The delimiter, almost always I will choose like a comma and a space. And then if you want to order it, you can have those extra things as well. So first we're going to do the table, and the table in this case is just going to be my main data table. So I'm just going to write main data, choose that one, which has the right symbol and press a comma. And then we get the expression and the expression in this case, we're just going to do a column, which is just going to be the name column. Uh, keep an eye out for which is the one that you want. You want main data and the name, and then we're going to press close our brackets there and see what that gives. So if I add my names listed into the table visual, I get this. And notice that when there are two, it won't have a space. So that's kind of annoying. And the total row is just all of the names together. Almost always when you're going to do this in a table, take off the totals. They're not useful. So we're going to go a little bit further and we're actually going to add in a delimiter. So comma, it is square brackets, but we're going to do speech marks, comma, space and speech marks. Click to go out of it. And now it's going to add a comma, which is what we want. And I've also added another measure, which is how many starts of that day. So I'm going to add that here and you can see that there are three, one, two, three, etc., etc. And I can even sort it by this column and I can see four, three, and it is listing them out like this. All right. So that's all very well and good, but now let's add in the sales numbers as well. So I'm going to add in a new measure. I'm going to do listed names and sales equals concatenate X. Now I'm going to do the table, which is going to be main data tab to lock that in. And then my expression is going to be using both of them. So I'm going to be saying name from the table, main data, name tab and ampersand space. And then I'm going to add in sales also from the main data, the column, not a measure and then comma speech marks, comma. It might get confusing, but the kind of dark red, this is just text. So you want your comma in there, which is different to the comma that separates from each input in the formula. So press enter or click out of it. And then you're going to get it over here. I'm just going to leave it in the brands table. Doesn't really matter too much. And then we have it here with the ones as we would want them. But they are not sorted, which is kind of a bit annoying. So you usually would want to get these sorted because why not? So let's go back into this one. And then let's add in the next input, which is order by expression and order by. So order by expression, we're going to do sales. And it's going to be the column, not total sales measure. And we're going to say that it's descending. 
So it's going from highest to lowest. Press enter. Tab would have locked that in as well. And now we've sorted it, but there's just too many of them and it just makes it very impractical. So we want to have just the top five, say. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is take all of this and I'm going to copy it, control C, and I'm going to do a new measure. I'm going to say top five listed names and sales, and it's going to be sorted equals control V, going to be that. But what I'm going to make the change is in the table. Because instead of saying main data, I'm going to say this other measure, top n. And top n allows you to choose a, an n value, which could be 3, or we're going to do 5 to be the top 5. And then you have the table, and then the order by expression, order 1. These are, again, for sorting it. And we're just going to do uh, the table to be the main data table. And then we're going to close our brackets for the top n because we don't need the other ones. And then just press a comma after here. Delete that because that was our previous table. And then we go into the expression, which looks like that. Press enter. And then if I choose this one and remove the other one, I can see that I have just the top five and they are sorted, which is kind of nice. Now this is all very well and good, but it doesn't work if we have multiple times that that person is appearing here. All these names are unique, so it is showing us correctly. But for example, if I look at the top three brand and sales and make that into a table, and I do that by start day name, then we're going to see that I have Dell listed two times, Samsung listed two times. So it's not actually going to aggregate them together and then give you the value. It's just going to give you each individual one, what was the highest, second highest, etc. So that's not going to work for us, which means that we're going to have to go a little bit too far. So to teach this, I'm just going to show you how to make a new table. So in the modeling tab, you can choose new table. And I usually don't encourage people doing this, but we're just going to use it for demo purposes in this case. So I'm going to say a summarized table is equal to the function summarize and then press spaces to get rid of that. So I want is the table first and then I can choose the column name and then I can give it an, my own custom name and then I can choose an expression, which could even be a pre-made measure. So I'm going to say here, my table is going to be main data, same as before, press tab to lock that in. And then I'm going to choose main data and the brand and then comma, and then I'm going to choose the name that I give it, which is brand name. So this could be the same as before, or it could be different. And then I'm going to choose an expression, which is going to be total sales. Total sales is one that I pre-made. Uh, note that it's purple, which means that it's a measure. And that is essentially just the sum of the sales. But if I click on it here, total sales equals sum of main data sales. And now let's go to that table we just built. And then you'll see I did make a mistake. So this is actually the name of the measure. So I'm going to say just sales like that. And then it will show me this one here. All right, great. So now that we've got that, we can actually put this inside our measure. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it. Control C. So new measure. And I'm going to call this brand and sales top three. And I'm going to say equals Again, start with concatenate X, and then we're going to choose the table to be top N, and then the N value is going to be three, but then the table after that, I'm going to paste it because it's going to be this summarized table that we just built. It's going to be a virtual table. We don't actually need the one that we built. I'm going to delete it later on to show you. And then comma, and then brand from the main data, and then we're going to do and speech marks, speech marks, and, and then we're going to do sales. So sales, we're going to choose this one, this one that comes from kind of the same table that we've just built. And then I'm going to choose comma, then delimiter, same as before. Order by expression is going to be sales again, tab, and then order is going to be descending. Close my brackets for concatenate X there. And now let's try it out. So let's do it in this table. And we have just three, 
and they are sorted and they are never having duplicates. But there aren't many instances where there are duplicates, so let's just check that again against something else. So I'm going to do this one and against day name, start day name. That's probably going to be it. So there is going to be yeah, listed from highest to lowest and even the total as well. But what we might want to do is have a comma or even have a K. So we're just going to do one final thing, which is add the format function. And the format function, it allows you to kind of convert something to text. But with the format function, you can also say, for example, you want something in K for a thousand like this or however much you want, like a million, etc. So since we're dealing with text, we don't do any further calculations. It's OK to convert it to text in that context. So what I can do here is as I'm combining with sales, I can write format and then format has value and then comma and then the format and then locale name. I very rarely use that. So sales and then the format is going to be speech marks. This one is going to be the regular one, close my brackets. And if I want to have a comma, force a comma, I can do that. And now I have a force comma in there. So this symbol means it's a placeholder, this zero as well. There are slight differences between them, but that is a good one to use. So you can also do, instead of this, you can do comma point, and then you can say another number sign or a zero, and then K, and then press enter. So these ones are placeholders. So the hash and the, num and the zero are placeholders, and there you go. Now it's done it to one decimal place of the thousand. You could, of course, do, if it was million, you could do two commas and then million and then point however many you want, and that will work as well. So if you go onto the website, I'll show you in a second, you can get what goes into the format function in the second input in order to get whatever format you want. Great. So that is a combined trick. And just to show you that if I want to, I can go to this table and I can delete it and it doesn't impact what's going on at all. This symbol means that it is a table that's been calculated. Generally, I try and avoid them. It's very rare that I'll use them. So this is the website of the format function. And if you scroll down, all the way to the bottom, it shows you what symbols you can do. So the zero, the hash symbol, the dot, the comma, etc. Uh, it's very similar to custom formats in Excel, if you use that before, but it's very slightly different. So do have a look at that because I think it's really useful to know and be aware of. Great. So if you like this video, then my name is Dave and I'm going to have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams, Google Sheets, Power BI. If you're using Tech of the Workplace that I'm covering on my channel, I love talking about the new stuff. So subscribe if you like this kind of information. Thanks for watching.